in the book of Ezekiel 22 and 23. And this, this passage right here is just going to dispel that myth that we've been hearing. You turn on TBN, you turn on Daystar, different stations, and, and it seems like 90-something percent of all you hear is that this is the greatest time for the body of Christ. Well, they're wrong. It's not. It's not the greatest time. This is the worst time. It's the worst. You should be uncomfortable at what is going on. You should be uncomfortable at the sin in the land. You ought to be uncomfortable at what's happening. You ought to be uncomfortable at the way the devil is infusing himself into the body of Christ and the body of Christ is mixing the perverse with the sacred. You ought to be uncomfortable. This is not, this is not a comfortable time for a believer. Amen. Any real believers in here know what I'm talking about? I watched that. I'm like, I'm wondering what's going on. What, where, where do you live? Maybe I need to move on your street if this is the best time. Amen. Now, if you're looking at it from Jesus coming back, oh, yeah, he's that. Now, that's, that's imminent. His return. I mean, everything is in place. Everything bad done already happened. I'm waiting on the return of Christ, but I'm tired of hearing about everybody trying to, you know, uh, uh, make it like nothing is going on out here and everything is okay and don't worry about it. Just get your house and your car and be all right. As long as you give to us, of course, you know that's coming. Amen, because if they got on there talking about how bad things really are, they ain't going to be able to stay on, amen, because the money ain't going to come right. But I thank God for people that's not scared to preach in spite of it may hurt their money amen it's not about money it's about saving souls y'all we're in a bad look at somebody and say we're in a bad time this is an evil time men are evil the land is evil and this is truth behind hip-hop for the curse of the culture ezekiel 22 and 23 says and the word of the lord said came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed nor rained upon in the day of indignation. There is a conspiracy. Look at somebody and say conspiracy. Conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion ravening the prey. They have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows. That's fatherlessness in the midst of Thereof, her priests have violated my law, they and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and the profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. They have hid their eyes from my Sabbath, and I am profaned among them. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves, ravening the prey to shed blood, to destroy souls, and to get their money dishonestly and her prophets have dabbed them with untempered mortar seeing vanity and divining lies unto them saying thus saith the Lord when the Lord ain't said nothing the people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and the needy yea they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it but I found none. Therefore, I have poured out mine anger. You know, God is upset. In this day, he's upset. There's too much going on that does not represent him, that calls itself him, but doesn't represent him. There's an underlying current in the earth right now. In our so-called American culture, in our African-American communities, there is something going on. Please don't sleep anymore. After this message, and I'm saying this in the beginning of it, go home and I want you to get on your computers, the internet, and I want you to go to Google, which is a search engine. Those of you that don't know how to do it, just go get your kids. Early as three, four. They're to hell. <laughs> they pass that stuff around school like drugs now. That information. Google. And I want you to research what you hear tonight. I want you to look, 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 look. I want you to search, search, search. 
and I want you to get as wise and as smart as you can because right now, the difference between what's real and what's fake, unless you have divine revelation of God, you might get fooled. That's the time we're in, y'all. And it all dates back, like I talked about in part two, it dates back to Egypt. Dates back to the land of Egypt. It dates back to the gods of Egypt. <clears throat> you remember what happened in Egypt? God put his people in the care of the Egyptians because, of course, the Egyptians were the wisest culture that ever lived as far as just knowing how to do stuff, how to make money, even in famine, how to have food. They just knew what to do. They were wise people. They were black people of color, they were Africans, but, and they were wise. I mean, just wise, knew what to do, knew how to make stuff when nobody else could make it. Inventors, all that. But they had a problem. They got beside themselves in their knowledge and they began to go after other gods. Some 900 gods resided in Egypt. Different gods, gods of everything, gods of this, gods of that. Then they started making shrines to the gods and altars to the gods. Then they started making symbols and symbolism and different things and using that to represent certain gods. And God got angry and went and got his people out of Egypt. But when he got them out of Egypt, some of the Egyptians went with them. Let me tell you something. Don't you ever believe that Pharaoh wasn't smart? Pharaoh was smart and he knew there's no way I'm going to release these folks without putting some plants in there because when I come back for them, I need some folks that can turn some of them. Are you listening to me? There were plants. There were uh, Israelites that left that didn't want to leave. There were Israelites that they, they had a love affair with Egypt. And they didn't want to let Egypt go. And we know that from reading the Old Testament of God constantly trying to turn them back to him. And they kept turning back to the idols of Egypt over and over and over. Didn't want to let go of the pleasures of the flesh. Egypt represents sin and the flesh. They didn't want to let go. They wanted to keep pleasing themselves. They wanted to feel good. They wanted to be something. They wanted these gods, they wanted any god they wanted. If they, if they couldn't get enough, a god to get close to them, they just make up another one. And all these 900 gods resided in Egypt. And because of that, God began to take or devise a plan to get Moses to get his people out of there. But even as they left, they left marked, some of them, with the love affair with False gods. Let's talk about this, y'all. What happened in Egypt? And these are some of the Egyptian gods that are, this is Horus the falcon here, which is uh, one of the head gods, Anubis, the god of the dead. This, of course, this is the third eye or the uh, all-seeing eye of Horus, later becoming the eye of Osiris. This is the sphinx, and of course, that's the Ankh above which all of the false god carried all of the false gods carried egyptian gods replaced the true and the living god exodus 34 and 14 for thou shalt worship what no other god for the lord god whose name is jealous is a what jealous god voodoo and witchcraft replaced the spirit of god this is happening in egypt voodoo and witchcraft all the other god worship false god worship all they were doing was conjuring and the thing you got to get in your mind before i even get any deeper than this is that what you do in the natural is going to have a spiritual consequence and it's not going to just what you're doing in the spirit is not going to just affect you but it's going to affect your lineage it's going to pass through your bloodline are you listening to me? Spiritually, it will pass through your bloodline and there will be those that are cursed by something that great grandmama may have done. Are you listening to me? Don't worry about that rain. Exodus 7 and 11, when Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments that was right after God had performed a miracle. He told him, throw down the rod, Moses. Moses threw it down. It became a snake. See, I'm talking to those that, you know, those that read the uh, 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 Bible. Some of y'all may not have, and you saw the prince of Egypt, so we'll just have to work with that. 
amen, or the Veggie Tales, or whatever you had to watch as your supplement, your vitamin. Threw down the rod. What did Pharaoh and them do? They threw a rod down. What did it ha what, what happened? Turned into a snake. They did in like manner with their enchantments. And this is the saddest thing that happened in Egypt. Children were sacrificed for the sake of pleasure, power, and wealth. Sad. But Pharaoh did not want the Israelites to outnumber them. He didn't want to lose his authority. See, the, the adults knew the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He did not want the mention of another God. He wanted to stamp them out so that he could reign supreme and Ra, Osiris, Horus, the leading gods of, of Egypt, could have power. He knew as long as they were there, if they outnumber him, they'll, out, they'll overthrow him. Are y'all listening to me? Acts 7 and 17 says, but when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and in multitude in Egypt till another king arose, which knew not Joseph, the same dealt susceptibly with their kind and evil and treated our fathers so that they cast out their young to the end they might not live. Whenever you start destroying the young, God's going to come after you. God came into Egypt with the plagues, 10 plagues. In Egypt, each plague representing a different God of Egypt. Each plague targeted a different God of Egypt. The last two, the darkness, which to me were the two most powerful. The darkness went against Ra, the sun god. Ra, the sun god, the sun was worshipped in Egypt. And everybody worshipped the sun. They thought the sun had great power and God went against it and caused darkness. You can imagine how they felt then, right? And then the last one, of course, the firstborn son. Of course, he killed the firstborn, and Pharaoh lost his son, which was against Pharaoh, that plague, against Pharaoh himself. A very hurtful plague because his son was the lineage of the Pharaohs to succeed him in power. Are y'all listening to me? Look at somebody and say, but God does what he wants. And I like the fact that he went against the gods and went in there showing out. I love that. God went in there and showed them who the real God was. Amen. And then when they thought it was over and chased them out and chased them up to the, to, to the sea, God parted the sea. Amen. And then swallowed them up. Look at somebody and say, God showed out. I love when God do that kind of stuff. Amen. Let's deal with some of the symbolism that was going on in Egypt. And I'm, I'm making a very good point. Just stay with me. Some of the symbolism. This one right here, of course, is the Ankh. And this is not a cross. I told you that in part two. This is not a cross. Don't be a fool. Don't be deceived. This happened thousands of years before there was ever a Christ that was crucified. This symbol was carried by the false gods of Egypt. If you look at hieroglyphics and the old uh, 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 pictures or writings or drawings of the Egyptians, you will see old gods depicted, the, the gods of uh, Egypt depicted holding the Ankh. The Ankh was not a cross. It was adopted as a cross by the Coptic Christians that were under St. Mark, but they weren't supposed to do that. They weren't supposed to take a relic from uh, uh, false god worship and try to use it as a cross. That's why Christianity has not accepted it, but now we've got some soul brothers that are pastors that is trying to bring it back back to Africa and, and come on now. Somebody need to just get back to the Bible. Amen. Back on your knees. The Ankh, an Egyptian symbol. symbol uh, it's a mythical, it symbolizes myth, mythical eternal life, rebirth, and life-giving power of the sun. And it was carried by them. It's a cursed symbol. If you're wearing one, I want it tonight. The compass, this is a Masonic symbol, a part of free masonry. The Masonic symbol is the compass and the T squared represents movement toward perfection and balance between spiritual and physical, which resembles Egyptian and Oriental mysticisms. I know that just messed somebody up because you see it in front of churches all the time. 
on the little stoops, churches just curse and wonder why they can't get a breakthrough because they got this symbol. This symbol did not originate in Egypt, but it represents the spirit of Egypt. Are y'all listening to me? The third eye. Y'all got introduced to this by uh, Steve Harvey on the comedy show God Ain't Through With Me Yet or whatever that, that was that they filmed at the Mega Flesh. And he's up there joking about stuff that he shouldn't have been joking about and talking crazy in front of believers and believers just laughing and, and joking like that's just ah ha ha just ought to have been praying for him and feeling sorry for the brother that he got taken by somebody that's trying to do something in this life great and won't they name the shine and be big time because they got Hollywood in their pocket I'm gonna tell the truth ain't no time for no games look at somebody say ain't no time for no games who ain't nobody thinking about them and he kept joking, y'all, that's my third eye. That, uh, that's my third eye. This is a demonic symbol. It's a symbol, the third eye in Egypt. It was the eye of Horus, a favorite project, of course, in school. It represents the Egyptian sun god, Horus, who lost an eye battling Seth. Pagans use it as a charm to ward off evil. And whenever they use anything pagan as a charm to, or, or a statue or anything that wards off evil, you know how it does it? By being more evil. Somebody ever give you anything and say, this will protect you from evil. That means it's more evil. And it'll scare the other evil off. The pentagram. This is used in Freemasonry too. You see it used as the eastern star for the ladies. And I'm talking about uh, uh, all the masonry and, the, and, and stuff. Yes. Pentagram used in occultic rituals to direct forces or energies often represents Satanism, the horned god of various expressions of contemporary occultism. It's really the head of Baphomet, the half man, half woman goat that's worshipped in witchcraft and Freemasonry. It represents Lucifer. It's the sign of Satan, the sign of Lucifer. Ask a witch, ask a warlock. They'll tell you this is a sign of Lucifer. You can't take it and make it what you want to. You can't take it because your uncle's a Freemason and make it what you want to. It's the sign. Look at somebody say it's the sign of Satan. The Sphinx of Egypt. It's an Egyptian or Babylonian guardian of sacred places. An idol with a human head and a lion's body. And you see a lot of, of course, fraternities like Alpha Phi Alpha that use the Sphinx, the demonic emblem of satanic ritualism. Yeah. Funny how folk get mad at you because you know something. I love it. I don't like him. Why? I just don't. <laughs> oh, this one going this is gonna be fun right here. The so-called star of David, which is not the star of David. David never had a star. Wasn't on his shield. There's no proof of that. There's no Bible for that. This is two pyramids intertwined. To form a hexagram. Look at somebody say hexagram. hexagram. Ask a witch, ask a warlock. They'll tell you we can't even perform a successful demonic seance or spiritual invasion of Satan without a hexagram. But that's on the, the, the Jewish flag. That's a symbol. No, no, do you read? Look at somebody say, do your research. Do your research. This came from the Rothschild family who financially helped the Jews form their state of Israel, but it's from the Rothschilds who are Kabbalist Jews who worship another God, hate Christ. It's getting quiet. Hate Christ of those that would crucify him and hate him. This is a symbol that was adopted. It's a demonic 
symbol. It's a hexagram. That's where we get the word hex. When they say, I'm going to put a spell on you, they say, I'm going to put a what? A hex on you. And they use the hexagram to do it. It really originated from Solomon. It's the seal of Solomon. When Solomon gave himself over to other gods and built the altar for uh, the false gods for Moloch and the other false gods. This symbol came from one of the wives of the pharaohs. It's an e I mean, one of the uh, pharaoh's daughters that he was married to. It's an Egyptian symbol originating with mysticism and false god, false worship practices. Are y'all listening to me? The sorcerers believe it, it represented the footprint of a special kind of demon called a true and used in ceremonies both to call up demons and to keep them away. A former Satanist says, to a sorcerer, the hexagram is a powerful tool to invoke Satan. Look at somebody say, that ain't no peace sign. <laughs> oh, we've adopted it in America. We think it means peace, peace. Negroes start wearing it while they're rapping, you know. They just looking for stuff to wear. Are they gonna start wearing forks and spoons and just, yes. I just need my jewelry heavy. It's, it was, it's really Nero, Nero's cross, a broken upside down cross. The Roman Emperor Nero, who hated and persecuted the early Christians, it meant the destruction of Christianity. That's why when they put it on and the hippies, they went to smoking and using the drugs and they was talking about peace, peace, but they was all possessed. <laughs> so you got to understand this witch, well, well, let me don't get on. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Skull and crossbones. Oh, this is popular now because of hip hop. You walk in a hip hop store, the first shirt you're going to see is a bunch of demonic skulls and crossbones with glowing eyes. Used to only be he a, a heavy metal, remember that? Used to only be the heavy metal music. Now you walk in any hip-hop clothing store, get the latest hip-hop albums, they got old demonic skulls on the front. Rock Aware, Jay-Z just came out with a new line to the Rock Aware brand called The Bones Collection. And on all the clothes, he's got skulls and bones. Y'all gonna let me preach? The skulls represent death or murder. It was used by anarchist Christians that, that are Christians that believe that they can do whatever they want to symbolize Golgotha, the place of the skull where Jesus died. Freemasonry, in Freemasonry, it symbolizes the transience of the material world and is used to initiate rituals, rituals as a symbol of death. One of the rituals to even become a Freemason is you have to play like you were killed. You have to die. Sometimes they even use coffins. They put nooses around your neck and they cover your head and, and tell you to play dead and now we're going to take you from the dark and bring you into the light. But the saddest part about that is when you play dead, you become dead spiritually. And when you become dead spiritually, your children spiritually are bastards. And they act accordingly. And of course the pyramids, which some folks putting on their churches, today stand as a reminder of the ancient Egyptian glorification of life after death. The pyramids were built as monuments to house the tombs of the pharaohs to prove that they were gods. How did all this stuff get here in America though? All of it was, all that was Egyptian stuff and, and how did it get here? Look at somebody and say, how did it get here? Oh, I'm gonna tell you. Ezekiel 20 and seven said, then said I unto them, cast ye away every man the abominations of his eyes and defile not. Look at somebody say, defile not. Defile no, you didn't say it like I said it. Defile not, defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am the Lord. And you know, whenever he puts that, I am the Lord your God, that means that if you do this other stuff, I'm not <laughs> your Lord.
Before we talk about this, I got to talk about Freemasonry some more. Oh, we getting into the hip hop, just wait. I'm going somewhere. Look, somebody say he's going somewhere. Y'all know how this works. I have to educate you because we're just not educated. I have to dig up some stuff that just was buried. Freemasonry and of course the black counterpart, Prince Hall Freemasonry. Let's talk about this because folks call themselves Christians and are Masons. Folks call themselves believers in Christ and they're Masons. But there are reasons why you can't be both. Oh, somebody ready to leave now? They're like, I want is the camera on me. <laughs> reasons why. The first one, Jesus strictly forbids the swearing of oaths. But there are terrible death oaths that are sworn, oaths that are sworn to in the first three degrees of the Masonic Lodge. We are to provide things honest in the sight of all men according to the Bible. Didn't the Bible say that? But in the oath of the Master Mason, the Mason swears to keep all the secrets of his brother Masons, even criminal secrets. I got to tell you what's wrong with it first. The Masonic Lodge does not accept the Bible as the inspired word of God. While the Bible can be used on the altar of Freemasonry, they claim that the Quran and other false scriptures from other religions have just as much right to be used there. So basically, you got to compromise, sell out, and accept all spiritual and religious things. Only, body, only person in here that ought to be mad is a Freemason. And the only reason you mad is because you can't figure out how I know. When a person joins the Masonic Lodge, he is joining a religion that is not Christianity. The Masonic Encyclopedia written by the Masons says that. Not only do Masonic authorities admit the Freemasonry is a religion, they also say it is a religion that will accept all people no matter what creed they hold. This denies Jesus as the only way to salvation. Y'all still with me? Pray for me. Masonry teaches that God is the father of all mankind. He's not. Because Jesus specifically said, y'all are acting like y'all's father, who is the devil. Remember when they was acting up, he said, no, nope, your daddy is the devil. Well, I'm sick of this little, this picture of Jesus y'all trying to pro, uh, portray like he ain't hardcore. He walking around just, I don't know, no, he said, y'all daddy is the devil. That was almost like saying your mama back then. The Mason prays to a God they call the supreme architect of the universe. This is not the God of the Bible who only accepts those that come to him through Jesus Christ, but some God, which is Osiris, the great architect of the universe to the Egyptians that replaced Jehovah God. They replaced him with their grafter of the universe, Osiris and Ra. Truly the grace of God is left out and a man is taught to seek God in Freemasonry through his own works. Oh, y'all. It's going to help somebody. The Bible tells us that we are to speak the truth in love, yet Albert Pike, he was a high-ranking Mason, wrote books on Freemasonry, admits that Masons are deliberately misled as to the real meaning of the Masonic symbols. When they bring them in, they tell them a lie. They don't know what they're getting into until it's too late. Amen. 
And the last one, Jesus taught what he did out in the open because he had a message of truth that he wanted to convey to the world. To be a Christian is to be Christ-like and to do like Jesus did. Why are they doing everything in secret? And what is it that they are trying to hide? Quotes from two high-level Masons. That's Albert Pike, Albert Mackey. Albert Pike says every Masonic lodge is a temple of religion and it teach, its teachings are instructions in religion. Albert Mackey says the removal of the name of Jesus and references to him in the Bible verses used in the rituals are slight but necessary modifications. Can I teach on this tonight? I know some of y'all saying, what they got to do with hip hop? Just wait. Look at somebody say, just wait. We're going to get there. <laughs> the Antichrist policy behind Freemasonry is as follows. The banishment of religion from all departments of government, from all public institutions, and as a mark of triumph to this policy, the removal of the crucifix and all religious emblems from legislat legislative assemblies, the courts, public hospitals, schools, Etc. Has that happened or has that not? The secularization of marriage, same sex marriage, marry a toad, marry a horse, marry a little boy, marry anybody you want because God doesn't put marriages together really according to the Mason. Complete freedom to worship as long as you're not worshiping Christ. You notice that? You can look like you won't, act like you won't. You can walk in any school with any book. You can walk in there with the Talmud. You can walk in there with any book of knowledge from any religion except. Oh, we're going to get there tonight, y'all. It's going to be good. Unrestrained liberty of the press, even in the propagation of irreligious doctrine. And of principles subversive of morality. Similar freedom for the stage, movies, television, any manner of public activities. Basically, we're going to take control, let the media send us all to hell. You can promote anything, whatever, garbage, sin, whatever. We don't shield the kids from it. We don't, they don't guard the kids from it anymore. On regular TV, you'll see a commercial with two men kissing. On regular TV, you'll see a commercial of an upcoming show with two women kissing. You'll see anything. No more. No more do we care. They put them little ratings up there, but they don't put them up there fast enough. By the time the ratings on there, they already two big hairy stank men locking up. You ain't got to come out of Freemasonry to know that's nasty. The elimination of all distinction between the sexes. Are we seeing that now? We see that now even in the African American community. You can't tell our young boys from the young girl. They are, you gotta make them turn around and push them in the chest. Cause the boy wears hair just like the girl. Got the beads and the corn roll, the braids and shaking it and making it sound like a maraca. Wearing the big old capri pants and sandals and flip flops, making all that noise when you walk. Ain't no man supposed to be sounding off when he. Pop, pop, shit, pop, shit. What kind of man are you, boy? What kind of job do you think you're gonna get like that? You gotta do a boy test on him. Oh, yeah, okay. Can I preach in here? This guy right here, this is Alistair Crowley. Most demonic man ever lived. He called himself 666 the beast. 
He's responsible for rock and roll as far as the satanic side of it. He inspired the church of Satan. He said his, his life's desire was to go against Christ. He lived to go against Christ. He said he had a vision and Horace the falcon of Egypt spoke to him and told him that he was to head satanic worship. He's worshipped by the Beatles, Rolling Stones, groups like that. Sting, Bono, and U2. You got to get our video, the other video, Truth Behind Rock and Roll. You'll learn all of that. And guess what he was? He was a Freemason. I wouldn't be one just because of that. 33rd degree, and somebody say, well, he was one, but I'm not like him, but y'all are brothers. <laughs> Listen to what he said. He said, be strong, old man, lust, enjoy all things of sense and rapture. Fear not that any God shall deny thee for this. Fear not any God. The settlers came to this land, brought the word of God with them, sanctified the land and said, this will be a holy land and we're going to sanctify it unto God when the settlers came. It was a new world. They came and Indians got saved and folks that was with them got saved and the power of God hit in the Jamestown area, the Jamestown revivals and the first church was established. And this land started out the right way. But you know who was looking at the land? Satan. A few years passed, and when they began to organize America, something began to happen. When I began to research hip hop, and when I was first going to do this video, and it was going to be called something else, and we were going to do it, and I had my little notes, and y'all, I thought it was the bomb. I was just going to get up here and talk about black people and how the black folks is letting this hip hop destroy this nation and how they brought this Zulu stuff over from the Amazulus and the slave trade and they brought it over here and now they worshiping false gods in the hip hop and everything and God spoke and said, no, it's deeper than that. I said, what are you saying, God? And strange things start happening. Folks start coming at me out of the blue telling me. I had a guy from U.S. Customs just come up to me and tell me something you need to say. He said, I can't tell you what it is, but you got to say it. And I said, say what? And he said, you'll find it. And he just walked away and had strange things like that. I was like, what's going on? I began to really seek God and begin to fast and pray about what's really going on. And, oh, Lord, what I found. Mm. Idolatry and false God worship. America, even though those original settlers brought Christ, the founding fathers didn't. This is Thomas Paine, George Washington, Ben Franklin, and Thomas Jefferson. The founding fathers of our nation. I thought for years that these brothers was all right. That's what I was told. But I found out that none of them worshiped the God of the Bible. Couldn't find Jesus in any of the official documents, Constitution and Declaration. And couldn't find Jesus Christ in their writings and I begin to wonder what God were they talking about when they talked about God. Can I tell the truth in here? Our founding fathers began to seek a higher order of humanness. What Freemasonry is all about is Luciferianism. Luciferianism is the belief that you are better than what you were created to be. 
When Lucifer was in, oh, I feel the anointing of God. When Lucifer was in heaven, Lucifer desired to be greater than what he was created. See, worship is conforming to the image of what God made you. That's worship. Because you're showing him, I'm what you made. That's why homosexuality and lesbianism is so dangerous because it's anti-worship. You're showing them that you're not what he made in the beginning, not his intent. Can I preach in here? Luciferianism is that same belief. Lucifer in heaven said he wanted to be like the most high, but he was just an angel, but he desired to be more, so God kicked him out. Luciferians believe that had God not kicked him out, he would have become what he wanted, and he would have taken over. Look at somebody and say, spirit of dumb. If he could have took over, he'd have took over right before he got kicked out. That's Luciferianism, Freemasonry. Rest upon Luciferianism and anti-Christ, anti-Christian values. It's a hatred for Christ because you go against the word of God and you go against the only way to God. The founding fathers, Thomas Paine, George Washington, Ben Franklin, and Thomas Jefferson. George Washington said it like this. At the same time, I request that you be assumed of my best wishes and earnest prayers for your happiness while you remain in the terrestrial, terrestrial mansion and that we may hereafter meet as brethren in the eternal temple of the supreme architect. He was at a Mason meeting when he spoke those words. Supreme architect of the universe, that's Osiris. But while the silly, this is Thomas Jefferson. Y'all heard of him, right? He said, but while the syllabus is meant, he wrote a syllabus about Christ. He said, while this syllabus is meant to, meet, to place the character of Jesus in its true and high light, as no imposter himself, but a great reformer of the Hebrew code of religion, it is not to be understood that I am with him in all his doctrines. I am a materialist. He, Jesus, takes the side of spiritualism. He preaches the efficacy of repentance toward forgiveness of sin. I require counterpoise of good works to redeem it. Did y'all hear that? Founding father is not with Christ in all of his doctrine. Thomas Paine, although Thomas Paine quoted scriptures to denounce the concept of monarchy, his later work, The Age of Reason, is a writing on the implausibility of the Bible and the irrationality of Christianity. Paine believed in one God but rejected our religion saying my own mind is my church. And last but certainly not least, Ben Franklin. Ben Franklin himself became a Freemason in February 1731, provocable Grand Master of Pennsylvania in 1734. That same year, he ushered into print the first Freemasonic book to, the, to be published in America, the edition of Anderson's Constitution, the Bible for English Freemasonry. The first article reads, "'Tis, not, tis now thought more expedient only to oblige Masons to that religion to which all men agree. When these brothers begin to build what we know as America, Luciferian ideas, Luciferian symbols, satanic Freemasonry was used. It's an underlying current that's under this nation even now. If we take an aerial look at Washington, D.C., this is it right here. I highlighted the streets leading up to the White House, and this is what it forms. 
the head of Baphomet, the blasphemous half man, half woman goat of Luciferianism and Satan worship. But if you take your money and take Mason, M-A-S-O-N, and circle them, you can guide these lines from the top and form the hexagram. Something, look at somebody and say, something's going on. <laughs> now, the Bible didn't say money was the root of all evil. Thank you. So if you don't want your dollar no more, just give it to me. <laughs> what has happened, y'all? What has this done? You have to understand generational curses follow Freemasonry. When they go through the satanic ritualism, the satan using the symbols from Egypt and all those places, when they go through all these rituals, it put curses on families, thousands of generations, hundreds of generations. And now we're faced with an America with issues. Because it was corrupted by leadership. We got churches with issues because leadership is corrupt. So you better know that America's got issues because somebody was worshiping the wrong gods. Can I preach in here? I know some of you are scared for me. Don't be. Look at somebody and say, don't be scared. This was ordained. This is the message I saw in the beginning. Trust me. Because of the sins of our forefathers, America is now plagued by the number one thing is fatherlessness. Nearly 80% of our black homes are without a father. Makes our boys inferior. Makes them want to dress and look like women. Makes them more feminine. Effeminate. They don't know how to be a man because they don't have an example of a man. And you're going to go do a ritual where you play dead and put a noose around your neck and pretend you just died. And in the spirit, you're absent. And your lineage suffers. Homosexuality and lesbianism. It always follows Satanism. The first thing they do is pervert the order of God with anti-worship. Two men together is anti-worship. A man that considers himself homosexual, anti-worship. You don't look like what he made you to be. You no longer carry his image. He made you in his image and his likeness and that is creation. And you're anti that. Can I speak in here? Bondage. They all took slaves. They abused slaves. They raped slaves. Now that it's, that spirit is transferred, now we have more black men in prison than in college. That's true. Ignorance. We don't even know what Freemasonry is. We don't know we pledging Delta and, and AKA and all this. We don't even know what we're getting into. We just know it's going to make me somebody. We ain't going to ask no questions. Or oh, we're not going to ask a Christian a question, a real one. We're not going to ask God because this is what we want to do. We do things ignorantly, y'all. Poverty. Lord have mercy. You know there's more poor folks than rich folks. Disease. We'll talk about AIDS in just a second. And then ultimately, that death that was rehearsed and played with in the Masonic ritual. It's coming by leaps and bounds to us. 
Y'all, we're losing our people. Can I preach in here? <laughs> Hip hop is not a culture. No, because of all these things, hip hop is a consequence. Can I tell the truth in here? Yeah. Let me go to the beginning of this. Y'all still with me? Yeah. Where hip hop started is now where hip hop is now. Hasn't moved. Where it started is what it is now. It started because they was in clubs stealing and robbing and got kicked out of clubs because they were stealing and robbing from each other. This guy right here is Cool Herc, DJ Cool Herc, who they consider the father of hip hop because he's the one that created what they call the break beat in the dance and in the disco clubs. The break beat is basically adding another record of the same, the same record that you're already playing, buying two of them, and basically having two turntables. And when one is playing, when it's about to run out, you mix in the other one from the beginning, from the break of the beat, and you extend the song. That's a break beat. That's what Cool Herc from Jamaica was famous for. Jamaican-born DJ known as the father of hip-hop, he's credited for coining the term B-boy, which is break boy, and being the first DJ to extend the break beat on a record. Listen to what he says. He says, in the early 70s, the gangs came up and started to terrorize the clubs in the Bronx, started to smack up girls, started feeling them up and disrespecting him. Hip-hop hasn't changed. Robbing people's coats and stuff, so I shut down the discos. At the time, graffiti vandalism was getting out of hand. Not only that, a lot of five percenters used to come to the parties. So basically what he's saying is they was killing, they was disrespecting the women, talking, you know, talking about what they was going to do. They was robbing folks in the club. They got kicked out of the discos, went and formed their own parties to form this thing. We've got hip-hop now, where now, you know what they do now? Stealing, killing, disrespecting women. <laughs> Look at somebody say, spirit of dumb. Spirit of Look at somebody else and say, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. Listen, y'all, now I'm tired of this, so I'm going to just go on and drive this thing home. Right here. I'm sick of, I'm sick of talking about it. The term hip-hop derived from lascivious behavior. Now, if you're going to be the father of hip-hop, then why didn't you name it? What father doesn't name his own child? I don't consider him the father because he didn't name it. These guys named it the Sugar Hill Gang. Uh-oh, somebody about to backslide. Don't go too far back now. Don't let me take you back. Don't start hearing it in the head, in your head. But rappers delight. A uh, hip hop, hippie to the hop, don't stop rocking to the bang bang boogie. No, no, no stop. Somebody just stood up, to the. That was my jail. We're finna just end this right now. God is a word, God. God is into words. And hip hop means booty shaking. I mean, need we even talk about this anymore? Hip hop. In this song where they said a hip hop, you know what they was talking about? They was talking about the way the women's behinds were shaking to their beats. Bang, bang, boogie, up, jump the boogie. They was describing women's behinds shaking. And so they named this wonderful culture, this powerful movement among blacks. And like Bishop Jakes them say, this is God's hand on the youth. This movement, this is the youth. God's hand with on the youth is booty shaking. I heard him say one time about me, this brother stopping the greatest move of God on the youth. If God gonna reach the youth, he's gonna use booty shaking. 
And if hip hop means butt shaking, then what is holy hip hop? Look at somebody say, case closed. I'm sick of that foolishness. Break dancing ain't nothing but Egyptian contortion. See, contortion is when you extend your body out of the natural laws of motion. Whenever somebody has a, anybody ever cast a demon out of anybody? When somebody gets a demon, I'm looking for more hands next time, part five, I wanna see more hands. And when you show this video, you're gonna have to do it. When you're casting a demon out of somebody, the first thing the demon tries to do is try to make the person move out of the natural laws of motion to show his presence. He constrains and, and constricts and pulls and, and makes them do stuff they're not trying to do because he's trying to show himself. That's contortion. That's what a contortionist does. Egyptian contortionists, they pray to demons. The demon manifests in their body and they're able to bend and stretch. That's why yoga is so demonic. They're able to bend and stretch out of the natural laws of motion. It is not just contortion, it is worship to what occupies you. Conforming to the image of the thing that is inside of you. Break dancers, remember? Now they, it done evolved to something else, but remember the first break dancers? You remember what they used to do? Where did that come from? Egypt, remember? Remember? Where did that come from? Pop locking and Y'all know they're doing it in church now. You don't know whether to cast the demon out or give him a ribbon. Bro, that was good. I mean, is that, what? Crazy mess. Crump dancing. It's a movie called Rise. They doing this in church, y'all. I used to. I'm telling, I mean, I'm out of town almost every weekend. I gotta cast demons out of folks that's doing this stuff. This is, they about to, they look like they gonna explode. <laughs> and they moving real fast and they doing African stuff. They got painted faces representing all that African mysticism. Calling up demons. I was praying for a boy, I'll never forget. My wife was there, we was praying for a boy in Charlotte, North Carolina. And this boy came up and his mom said, his daddy's in a tribe, his daddy's Zulu. And said, when his daddy starts dancing, he starts dancing. His daddy is in Africa and he's here. I began to pray for the boy and he began to do the dance of his father and start dancing at me and start dancing at me like he was trying to hurt me or do something to me, doing this exact stuff. Because I saw a bit of this movie. I couldn't watch all that foolishness. But I saw a bit of this movie and, and I saw him doing the same thing this boy was doing. And he kept lunging at me with anger, acting mad like he was going to do something. You know, I was hoping he didn't try to hit me because then I might not have been spiritual on him. But he just kept, he just kept popping in my face and just, uh, just, uh, uh. And I spoke to him. I said, in the name of Jesus, God is, is your father now. And the boy began to repent and cry out. He stopped and fell to his knees. He said, God, save me right now. I said, now when your father in heaven does something you'll do it and when people see you they'll only see the father in heaven and we broke that curse off of that boy and he ain't danced like that since then they gonna come out with a movement of kids dancing like this let me tell you this foolishness This dance, and the guy who did the movie said, it, it often looks like a fight outside, and in few cases has developed in a fight. <laughs> now remember when you was young and you get in somebody's face? Come on. You know what that meant. <laughs> Crump. 
Crumping, however, is a more sinister and aggressive dance form. And it is intended, look at somebody say intended. Intended as an expression of anger or a release of pent up emotion through violent, exaggerated, and dramatic moves. Anger. I wish my child would try to crump. Ain't that the dumbest thing? Expression of anger. Boy, clean your room. I don't want to. <laughs> Come on, daddy. What? What? I got a bad grade on my report card. <laughs> Look at somebody say foolishness. foolishness. I'm getting somewhere. Y'all still with me? Yeah. Hip Hop Honors Awards just happened a few months ago. They got on there and honored what they called the gods of hip hop. I've been telling y'all since part one. They honored Africa Bambata, who's holding an ankh. You know, if I didn't know nothing about the ankh, I wouldn't want it after he held one. <laughs> this right here is Rakim who was introduced by Common, we'll talk about him later, as the God MC. This is Erica Badu, who sung a praise and worship song to him at this thing called Zulu. And she began to run across the stage and yell, Zulu, Zulu. And everybody began to sing it. What's the name of this nation? Zulu. Zulu, it's Ice Cube and Lil John in the middle. We'll talk about them later too. This is KRS-One, of course, the lead prophet of hip hop. I'm gonna show you two things that these guys spoke. Africa Bambada said, God gives us knowledge which is infinite and even challenge of God, if God exists or does not exist and to be rulers over the earth. Down he says, but we as Amazulu cannot wait for God to appear and show his, her, whatever self. Look at somebody say, that's blasphemy. He said, if you want to come to me, you must first believe that I am who I say I am. And he said he's whatever. KRS-One speaks. Listen to this. This is the lead prophet of hip hop. On James Brown, he says, James Brown, he summoned the entire black, he summed up the entire black struggle. James Brown dying on Christ's birthday shows not only who he was, Christ returned, but that hip hop has a chance politically to take a day. Let's celebrate James Brown. Hip hoppers celebrate the birth of their soul, the birth of their Christ, the birth of their nature. Every Christmas, we're going to play James Brown records. All that white Jesus stuff is over. Matter of fact, I'm going to call James Brown, James Brown the Christ. When you look at Jesus, look at James Brown. <laughs> about Africa, Bambada, he said, it wasn't like Bambada cared. He didn't care about Karis one in 1986 because he didn't have to. He's still, he's still above me. When is the next Zulu Nation ba reunion, Bam? You are my God. You are my Lord and Savior. And about Cool Herc, he says, today the South gives respect. They treat Cool Herc as Jesus. They treat Africa Bambada as Moses. And they treat KRS-One as David. Can I preach in here? We're going somewhere. Look, somebody say he's going somewhere. God's wrath comes first to those that go after other gods. You know what this is? This is Mardi Gras in Louisiana. Of course, this is the Egyptians. They're, they're pushing the uh, uh, Pharaoh down the street. They've got all of these, what they call sprites and all these things in this parade of Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras, look at the sign, how bold they proclaim. Nothing cancels Mardi Gras. Nothing. Sign, we love you, Zulu. Mardi Gras is a celebration, and they celebrate the god Zulu, the god of the Zulus. I even got a little clip right in here of Mayor 
Ray Nagin. Listen to what he says. Hail Zulu, hail Zulu. And then they wonder what Katrina was looking for. <laughs> False God worship. This is Russell Simmons. Talked about Kamora on part three. I gotta talk about hubby. No, they ain't together, but. This is Russell Simmons with Fat Farm. He just came out with a cologne called Atman. The word Atman, pronounced in the Sanskrit like Atma, is interpreted as main essence of man as his highest self. Russell Simmons mixed up a batch of spiritual oils and called the fragrant Atman, a word that means divine self or God. But the marketing minds of the world's biggest fragrance company that makes Calvin Klein, Nautica, and J-Lo didn't see the fit with his hip-hop following. But then Russell Simmons said, I mean, th then they said to him, we had quite a standoff. And then Russell Simmons says, they told me God doesn't sell. God isn't sexy. I think God is sexy. Sense and Mob Deep has a song called Pearly Gates. And in the song they sing, now homie, if I go to hell and you make it to the pearly gates, tell the boss man we got beef. And tell his only son, I'll see him when I see him. And when I see him, I'm going to beat him like the movie. For leaving us out here to dry on poverty for not showing me no signs that they watching over me. Yo, we a new breed in 2006. We don't give a F about that religious bull. Want to know what's wrong with your children? H to the Izzo. V to the is A. Jehovah has the song Lucifer that I played backwards that he got mad about. But in this song, he says, Lucifer, dawn of the morning, which dawn, you know, means in charge. He says in this song, yes, this is a holy war. I wet y'all all with holy water. He says, I spray the heckler, not automatic, all the static shall cease to exist like a sabbatical. I throw a couple at you, take six. Listen, he says, spread love to all my dead thugs. I pour out a little Louis to the head above. Yes, sir. And when I perish, the meek shall inherit the earth till that time is on and popping church. That's rock aware. This guy puts up the sign of Freemasonry. <laughs> Beyonce even has on her Deja Vu single a Freemason club mix. Y'all see it? Freemason club mix. And if you wanted to know what this symbol represents, just keep watching. Three six mafia. The six 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 mark of the beast mafia. False god worship, Satanism, Luciferianism in the highest degree. Won an Academy Award for their song, It's Hard Out Here for a Pimp. Even has the song, Stay Fly, where the girl in the background is saying, Lucifer, you are God, you are king. Your kids don't have to take the mark of the beast. All they got to do is sing that song. Right. 
But then on their website, they say, thank God, Jesus Christ. Look at somebody and say, foolishness. foolishness. Listen to one of their songs. And of course, you see this picture of them. There are the skulls with the eyes. And then they all got grills and shining. And they say, how can you have faith in a God that cannot even control creation? How can he lead you to salvation? There is no hope, chaos only. Welcome to the other side of reality, and this is your eternity. Hip-hop. Beat, rob, break, Murray race. Don't run, there's no escape. Bullets hit you right in the face. I'm not scared to catch a case. Slugs, hoes, blood, all on your clothes. Who'll die next? Nobody knows. Insane, maim, taking a drain. B, I will empty your veins. I do not feel no remorse. Blow your mom off the porch. 45-9 and grenades. Blow your girls right off the stage. Mess with this super thug and get drugged. Sweep your body parts under the rug. Bury this butcher knife deep in your guts. Make you a nice warm blanket of mud. You fools ain't learned to see the rear burn. A hollow point bullet will hit you so hard your body turned. The 3-6 Mafia. And you really want to know the truth? Their fathers are preachers. Ministers. Y'all praying for me? I'm not almost finished, but we will get there. Y'all, our culture, black culture, African-American culture is in trouble. Being seen and known is plaguing our culture. To most, it's now more important to be seen and known than to see and know. Prince Hall Freemasonry. Brothers join it every day. Most of the time, they come out of a sorority or fraternity. I mean, they come out of a fraternity because that's like the prelude of it. Allah. Brothers are joining the nation of Islam. They join it by leaps and bounds. And in Christianity, our leadership is just turning so gay and flaky that brothers want strong black leadership and they don't have fathers in their homes. So they're seeking to the bow tie wearing brothers because they look like men. But they don't believe Jesus is the Christ. Look at somebody and say, Allah's not God. 5% nation, the seventh, the seventh letter, the G for God. Eastern stars, that's the five-point pentagram, the symbol of Satan, which is their mark. And of course, gangs, the crypts and the bloods and different gangs. We're joining this stuff to replace something. We're joining this stuff blindly, not knowing what we're getting into. But to be seen and known is plaguing us, y'all. That's because that's the Luciferian concept. That's what Lucifer wanted. The Bible said he wanted to exalt himself and be seen. He said his glory would surpass the glory of God. He would mount the congregation. He wanted to be seen and known. I hope y'all are listening to me. First John says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not, look at somebody and say not, not. of the Father. In our culture, those that seek fame and riches must sacrifice the morality and future mobility of the young just to be famous. This is Nicole, one of the pussycat dolls that sing, I wish, uh, 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 don't you wish your girlfriend was a freak like me. They got a pussycat show where they trying to find the next pussycat doll and got a gospel artist, had a gospel artist judging them. Eric Dawkins from Dawkins and Dawkins coming out with a gospel album and he judging pussycat girls shaking sinfully lustfully Sierra who 
dances lewdly and Rihanna who sings nasty and Beyonce who is just no it's not Beyonce remember it's Sasha a spirit that lives within her that comes out and does those things that's what she says and her own father sat through all of that allowed her to do the spread in Sports Illustrated and said well it's business Just like Herodias and Salome, who Salome danced in front of her father seductively so that he would kill John the Baptist. Mama sent her up the river just so she could get what she wanted because she was tired of him preaching about the adultery they were committing. So she used her own daughter, fresh and flesh and blood. Yeah, that's what they're doing to Beyonce for riches to get what they want. Fatherlessness don't mean all the time that the father ain't there. It just means when he's there, he's not there. Jamil in there. Need I say any more? Neil and Chris Brown. That's the little youngster. He young and you know, he's for the little younger, but let me skip him. I'll come back to him. Flavor of love. I ban that. You don't play that mess in my house. That is some food. I feel so sorry for all the young kids that have to watch these girls sleep with each other and, and, and defecate on a stairway and what's all that nasty stuff they do all in the bed with him, sleeping with him as a competition. And he used to rap against black exploitation and public enemy used to, even though they were corrupt with the 5% doctrine, they used to always talk about how the white man was gonna exploit them. And now look at him. For the sake of money, he lets them humiliate him. But we know to come to God, you have to humble yourself. But to submit to the Luciferians, you have to humiliate yourself. That's why they make you do that when you go over and go online in these old demonic fraternities and sororities that recognize other gods and stomp and step. That's why I hate that movie, Stomp the Yard, ever even came out. Because now black folk think the only way they can get somewhere is if they pledge and humiliate themselves on some line humiliation anytime you have to humiliate yourself you better know that's not God oh I don't preach for hand claps look at them using the pyramid and, I, and they call it Greek I, don't, I never understood why they call it Greek lettered organization and it's all Egyptian idols of Egypt can I preach in here Chris Brown, little youngster, gonna sing to your daughter. He's innocent. Buy his album. He's all right, isn't he? He has a song called Gimme That. Mama, you may be three years older, but you're hot. Gimme that. You be talking like you like what I got. Gimme that. Then he says, Ma, which that, y'all, wait, let me talk about this, Ma. See, so that's effeminate men. Calling a, a girl ma, that means mama, I need you as my mama. Basically, I need you to braid my hair and take care of me. Pay my bills, ma. <laughs> Buy my rims, ma. <laughs> Walking, showing they draws and just all. <laughs> ma. Oh, boy, if I was, boy, any woman in here, if somebody call you Ma, that's a sign of what you're going to be if you stay around them. <laughs> Ma, take a break. Let me explain to you what your body got a young boy ready to do. If you take a chance to let me put them things on you, I could show you why I make them straight A's in school. I'm a hustler. Trust my frame and age. Got you thinking that I'm just too young to turn your page. That's for the little 
kids, huh? Oh, the little kids are listening to it because we have an epidemic in America. African Americans count for 50% of the estimated 44,000 AIDS cases diagnosed in 50 states and the District of Columbia. The rate of AIDS diagnosed, diagnosed for African American adults and adolescents was 10 times the rate for whites. The rate of AIDS diagnosed for African American women was nearly 24 times the rate for white women. The rate of AIDS diagnosed for African American men was eight times the rate for white men. We came across an AIDS statistic, 40% of the black youth in a school in Fayetteville, North Carolina were HIV positive, didn't know it. They were just taking, they were trying to give blood to the blood bank. Something's going on, y'all. Something's going on. And then when the kids turn on the Christian station, as if they could be helped, not even that, when they're watching BET and these other stations, and they're showing gospel awards and showing the Christian that's supposed to be leading them to Christ, they're trying to mimic the world. Saw an award show the other day. Kurt Franklin on there, thrusting his pelvis back and forth. Doing what they call the so fresh and so clean and all of them just grinding and getting down on the stage. And you wonder what's wrong with your kid. Why they all sexually active and can't get no help. Folk need to see a difference between the clean and the unclean. But from the days of Noah to the present, our culture has been guilty of mixing the sacred and the profane. Let me tell you this little story real quick about Egypt. When Moses was in Egypt, he went to Pharaoh. He told him, he said, we want to worship our God, Jehovah. Pharaoh said, okay, worship him. Y'all can do it right here. He said, no, I can't worship God in Egypt because I'm paraphrasing. You got all these gods up in here. We can't worship our God with, with the worship of your God. In other words, there has to be a difference because we believe our God to be the real God. So we just ain't going to worship him right up in here with all this other God. He said, nope, you worship him right here with all the other gods. See, Pharaoh had an agenda. He knew if you worship him here with all the other gods, then nobody will see the difference between your God and the other 900 gods of Egypt. Moses said, no, we can't do that. I can't accept that. Pharaoh said, okay, I'll tell you what to do. Take the adults out to the wilderness and worship your God, but leave the children here. He knew the adults knew the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He knew there was really no turning some of them. So go on and get rid of them. But if you get rid of them, then we'll take your kids, your kids that are weak, your kids that are vulnerable, your kids that don't know the truth, your kids that have been watching a double life up in their house. They don't understand. So we'll take them and we'll let them watch us worship other gods and mix the real God with the fake God, mix the sacred with the profane, and they won't know what's real and what's fake. The sacred and the profane. Y'all still with me? This is the mixture of the sacred and the pro profane right here. That's mega fest where they got godless 5% artists singing on the stage. Bunch of homosexual gospel musicians and homosexual preachers preaching. Whole bunch of mess going on up there. And, and I, you don't even want to talk about what they're doing later in the hotels up in there. Got to have security guards guarding the bathrooms and stuff to keep the men off each other. Patti LaBelle on tour in the Christian community singing her gospel so-called uh, gospel and secular songs mixing it all up in the churches is that I can't believe it Medea cross-dressed man preaching using scriptures Holy hip 
hip hop. Holy. Y'all yeah, got it. The word network and everything on the word ain't bad, but a lot of it is. I tell you the part that makes me mad is when they have the old godless secular artists up there introducing ministries. You watching the nerd, this is, this is so and so, and I just did a filthy porn flick, but you watching the, the, the word network. Just look at this, body and soul gospel. That's a time release, and we're gonna talk about time warner later. That's a time warner release. Mixing sensual love songs and gospel songs. Interpretations of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Earth, Wind, and Fire, the most demonic uh, 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 Egypt, Egypt worshiping group. I talked about it in part three. In history, and Kurt Franklin is on it. Doing one of the Earth, Wind, and Fire songs? Uh, oh, excuse me, interpreting one of the songs. So they won't come try to sue me. <laughs> TBN? KRS-One was on TBN. Paul Mooney, look at him, dressed like Christ. Know your history. Jesus was a black man. Jesus was a, look at somebody and say he was a Jew. Somebody just, spirit of dumb. B-E-T, I hate that station. That's the booty entertain entertainment television. That's all they show. Because that's what hip hop is. They trying to appeal to us. And if you want to appeal to us, you better have some stuff shaking and jiggling. Make us dance. I hate it because they mix the sacred and the profane. One hour of preaching, the next hour of butt shaking. One hour of preaching, the next hour. Then gospel artists giving secular artists awards. Secular artists giving gospel artists awards. And they try to call it a black stage. That ain't no black entertainment television. Because when something black is happening, they ain't never even showing it. Oh yeah, oh y'all, I'm gonna prove, I'm gonna prove that. When Coretta Scott King died, and she's supposed to be a prominent black figure, they had live national coverage on all the white stations. Guess what BET was showing? When Rosa Parks, who sparked the civil rights movement, a very important character, or personality in our history when they were showing her funeral on all the other stations. Guess what black entertainment television was showing? Oh, I can raise you one. When 9-11 happened and the planes hit the buildings, Thousands of lives were destroyed. MTV stopped and began to show live footage. Guess what black entertainment television was showing? Videos. Y'all, this is not funny. I'm sorry. What does Blair Underwood, who had an adulterous affair on the television show, Sex in the City, where they promote homosexuality and a sexual lifestyle in your 30s. James Brown, who even had a five-point pentagram, a Luciferian symbol on his cape, on one of his performances. And Ayanna Van Zant, who is a spiritualist, a princess in some godless religion. Faith sings sexually explicit stuff. Common 5% of doesn't even believe Jesus is the son of God and referred to Rakim as God. Sanaa Lathan, who kissed a woman on Nip Tuck and had an affair with a woman on the show. Tyrese's music is sexually perverse and sad. 
And of course, Denzel Washington, who says he prays to ancient spirits and angels. What do all these guys have in common? They're all voices on the Bible experience. That means when you buy this Bible so you can listen to the Bible, you're listening to people that don't even practice the Bible. The profane and the sacred. This is the 700 Club. I went out there, they filmed my interview, they said we're going to show the interview, it's going to appear on CBN on 700 Club, and we're all excited, we're going to expose hip-hop, and the girl was real nice. <laughs> Took the final video the day before it was airing to the boss, Pat Robinson, and he said, no. This guy is too controversial. But not too many months later, Fantasia appears on the 700 Club. You know Fantasia, the one that got lucky? They talk about her like she discovered the cure for cancer. She made it, y'all. She uh, climbed over leaps and bounds and struggled. She got lucky. They interviewed her and she talked about how God did this and God did that. Of course, that was right before she came out with Hood Boy, her song. Talking about, yeah, you got to understand what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, I'm, I'm talking about on this one, talking about the song, sexy, sexy as blank to me. Yeah, love. Then she says, I need a hood boy wearing wife beaters and jeans, always in a trap, in trouble, and he looks so mean. And we don't even want to talk about what she did on BET with Jamie Foxx. Look at somebody and say, what's going on? Holy Hip Hop, New York, June 19th. In one of the first landmark meetings of its time for Gospel Conference, the Holy Hip Hop Nation will meet the original pioneers of hip hop. BBJ, Africa Bambata, Canton Jones, Corey Red, Curtis Blow. All of them mixing the profane with The sacred. Somebody needs to pray. Satan is the power of the air. That needs to be airways. Listen to what two men said. We almost there. Look at your neighbor and say, we almost there. Stay with it. Y'all enjoying this? There is no greater power in the world today than that wielded by the manipulators of public opinion in America. Yeah, we're about to go there. See, because I was wondering about all this hip-hop, I was like, now, I see this stuff being played, all this vulgar stuff. I see the mixture of the sacred and profane. I see all this junk going on. But I don't see these guys having the means to get it to everybody. I don't see these guys with major corporations that propagate it. I don't see these guys with major distribution companies and the ability to get this stuff on the radio and in every store. So God began to speak loud in my spirit. The men that American people admire most extravagantly are the greatest liars. The men they detest most violently are those who try to tell them the truth. Look at somebody say, America's backwards. <laughs> so th th this disturbed me, and then the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Freemasonry. This nation was founded on it. It was founded on Christian principles, but the organization of America was founded on it. Excuse me, let me correct that. 
when they really begin to organize it and the founding fathers got in Freemasonry, which is the demonic, satanic, Luciferian idea of being something that you weren't created to be came to play. But my question was, where did that come from? Y'all praying? Kabbalah Jews brought Freemasonry to America. Kabbalah, an esoteric system of interpretation of the scriptures, is based on the belief that every word, letter, number, and even accent contain mysteries interpreted by those who know the secret that resembles Freemasonry. That's where it came from. Jews were actively involved in the beginning of Freemasonry in America. There is evidence that they were among those who established Masonry in seven of the original 13 states. A Jewish Mason, Moses Michael Hayes, helped introduce the Masonic Scottish Rite in America. Let me tell you something. I'm not being anti-Semitic. Understand. I believe that there are some Christian Jews and there are some Jews that are following God, but there are also those that study hatred for Christ. I got to tell the truth. Some that have put the Torah down and picked up the Talmud, which is the Bible that, I mean, which is the book that said Christ is a bastard child. And he was a witch and practiced witchcraft. And his image needs to be wiped out. It was brought to America, taught to the founding fathers, so that they can stamp America with it. Because eventually the Kabbalah Jews were going to come back for it. Have you noticed all of a sudden Kabbalah is being talked about? All of a sudden the movie stars in Hollywood are becoming Kabbalah. Everybody's talking about Kabbalah all of a sudden. You know why? Because the Antichrist agenda of Kabbalah is now in operation in America. And now those that despise Christ are the greatest influencers of public opinion stay with me y'all y'all still with me a, a book by Bernard Lazar said a Jew is not content to dechristianize he Judaizes he destroys Christian beliefs he provokes religious indifference but he also imposes on those whose faith he destroys his own concept of world morality and human life he labors at the age-old task the destruction of the religion of Christ. This was not meant as an expose, but was a boast regarding Jewish power. Are y'all listening to me? And now, the prince and powers of the air, the six major companies of this world that control what we think is owned by those that despise the Christ we serve. AOL Time Warner, Walt Disney, Bertelsmann, which is a huge book publisher, Barnes and Nobles and Random House, Viacom, all your cable, all your entertainment coming through your television, News Corp controls the major news corporations, everything that's in print. And Vivendi Universal, the distributor of godless hip hop and all kinds of music styles that go against the God you believe in. The six major companies all controlled by Freemasonry. See, the devil had an agenda that I'm about to speak right now and you better hear me quick. When Hitler went and begin to persecute the Jews. There was a reason for that. We all knew it was because of Hitler's hatred, but the devil got in Hitler because he needed to create a shelter for something that was coming later. And so what he did was he persecuted them for no reason and he hurt them and he bitterly, savagely tormented them and all of that and it was terrible, but it created an idea that if anybody says anything against a Jew,
He's anti-Semitic. He's not sympathetic. So you should not speak. So they can hate Christ. They can talk about the hatred of Christ. They can create a system of Freemasonry that will eventually invade the founding fathers and mess up the structure of America so that they can eventually come into power to control what you think about Christ, to destroy your image of Christ. And you can't say nothing. And now Kabbalah is controlling public opinion. Now what we think is contingent upon what we see. Most of our kids don't even know whether a black man needs to be in the home or not. They think it's okay if it's just a mom. Man don't need to be there. Being a gangster and a thug, that's okay. Long as you won for Christ. Why? Because the media. Fixing your hair and your clothes where you can't get a job and you immobilize yourself where you can't move forward in this society is okay because I saw it or I read it or I heard it. Oh, y'all. Y'all don't understand what's going on. Kids are now sacrificed. Look at this. Nickelodeon Kids Choice Awards. The same guy that ripped the woman's Janet Jackson's top open during the Super Bowl is now hosting the Kids' Choice Awards. Why? Because the person that owned the airways hates the image of Christ. Even had Ice Cube on there. Who has the movie? Are we there yet? That sounds innocent, doesn't it? But he has a so also has a song called Go to Church. And he says, if you are scared MF, then go to church. In that song. <sighs> Britney Spears and Madonna kissing on TV. You know what that represented? Madonna is Kabbalah. She's the one that is promoting it and giving money to it now. But her age bracket now is older. So by kissing Britney Spears, she passed it down to the next generation. Now Britney Spears is Kabbalah. I'm closing. Hitler and others that wanted to create slaves out of human beings, savage slaves that would kill for them, they used a system called monarch mind control. You know what that is? That's when something traumatic happens to you. You embed it deep in your subconscious. And it creates another identity, but it's embedded. But when you embed it, you embed it with a trigger where something later can trigger it and bring it back up. So what they would do is they would use a tone, music, or something and attach it to the traumatic event that they caused up on the, on the child. When the child got older, it would be in there. And then when they play that music, play that whatever they put on it, that trigger, it'll bring it back up. The person will become a savage killer and lose their own identity. The devil is using monarch mind control with our kids, y'all. Let me explain, and I'm closing with this. Because we've let our guards down, because we've went after other gods, because we've used Freemasonry, and we have Freemasonry in our bloodline from grandfather or somebody even further, and that curse is in our family, and all the sicknesses attached to it. You know that's where a lot of these sicknesses come from. Allergies are coming from that. Uh, uh, cancers are coming from these curses of Freemasonry. I've cast them out. I know what I'm talking about. Freemason curses making you sick unto death. People dying. And because our kids are subject to this now, a large majority of them are raped and molested at young ages or 
They're exposed to something sinful at a young age. They're hurt. They're traumatized by divorce or abandonment. And they bury it deep inside just so they can deal with it because it hurt. That situation is painful, so they bury it deep. But then here comes the powers of the air to play that song, that music that's talking profane and explicit and bringing up all those things. And the next thing you know, your child, you don't even recognize. They look different. They talk different. They behave different. They do exactly the opposite of what you tell them. They don't want the God that you serve. Something happened to them. The prince and power of the air triggered what was buried deep inside. Listen to what I'm telling you today. The devil has set up a Luciferian system in this nation of Freemasonry. We got preachers that are Freemasons. Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, they all Freemasons. What did I tell you to do at the beginning of this message? No, I told you to go home and do what? Y'all don't understand what today is. Y'all don't understand what tonight is. Because as God showed it to me, this is the beginning of the end. He just awakened you to what the devil is hidden from us. Listen, no, don't clap. Don't clap. Every one of your children is affected by this. Every one of you sitting in here is affected by this. And unless that curse is broken, it'll continue through your family. I don't know about you, but I want my kids back. I want my family back. I don't want them subject to a curse that will cause them to be sexually active outside of marriage. Cause them to be gangsters and thugs. Cause them to have a hatred for good. Everybody bow your heads. I know some of you think that's what's over my head. No, it wasn't. See those triggers that they use? You got to understand when that trigger goes off and that hurtful thing comes up or that traumatic thing comes up and the kid begins to think on it, it occupies their being. You know what that does? That makes it so that when they try to pray, they get on their knees to pray and they can't even focus on what they're talking about. They're praying to God, and some of you are suffering with that right now. You're praying and talking to God and thinking of other stuff. Your mind is occupied. There are too many things going on in your mind where you cannot focus on Christ. You pick up the Bible, you begin to read the Bible, and you read whole chapters in the Bible. And don't remember any of it. Have to go reread it and then reread it again because you can't retain it. Because something is occupying your mind. Understand what I'm saying. Mind control. The prince and power of the air. Lucifer is getting into our minds. And there's no room for God. I believe breakthrough is going to happen in this place tonight. I believe it's going to happen all over the world. And I believe once we all get real wise, I don't think there's going to be much longer before Jesus comes back. But we got to know first. I'm asking you right now, if you're in here and you feel like you've been bound by a curse, Freemasonry, Whatever. You may have pledged into a godless fraternity, sorority, 
sickness may be on you. You may, your parents may have done it, somebody did it, but you know it's a curse because you know every time you try to do right, you always resort back to the wrong. But you want prayer tonight because you want the curse of the culture off of you. If I'm talking to you, I want you to stand up right where you are. No, nope, don't clap. I want everybody's head bowed. I want you praying right now. I want you interceding. You know if you need to stand up because you know something's going on. It may be in your house. It may be in your relationship, but you know. It may be in your kids. Your kids know it. Submit to what God has taught you in here right now. In the name of Jesus. Devil, your curse is broken. Your time is up. You're not going to hold them down. You might as well let go in the name of Jesus. Your time is up. The word is out. The truth has come. You can't hide there any more. Mm. <laughs> you can't take back what's already been spoken it's over I'm not going to take a lot of time anybody else and you know get up get up can't stay out the club can't stay out the bed can't stay off the drugs can't and you try and can't that's a curse somebody did something that they shouldn't have and now you keep doing something that you shouldn't God wants to break it off you right now rape molestation abortion all those things somebody did something but now God is going to do something. Anyone else? Everyone that is standing up. I want you to come join me right up here right now. And we're going to denounce these curses right now. Come on. Just kneel down once you come up. Come on. We got room. Come on. Those of you that know how to pray. That have intercessory prayer life with the Lord you know how to touch God I want you to stand up I want you to point in this direction and I need your prayers I need your prayers point in this direction no witchcraft that won't work in here I need it right now right now you don't need music for this come on come on come on hmm just as it happens here it's happening all over the world. Freemasonry, you're exposed. The underlying current of Luciferianism, you're exposed. Porn addictions. That's where it comes from. It's a curse. You shouldn't keep going back. Oh, no, devil. Uh uh. While you're up here, I want you to just repent of your sins right now. Repent of your sins. Repent of any sin you've committed unknowingly and knowingly. Repent of the sins of your fathers and generations before you and generations behind you. Repent for them. Repent for the forefathers, the founders. Repent. 
and be not subject to Freemasonry, Luciferianism, or the curse of this culture. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I pray right now and believe with your people that everyone up here repenting of their sins shall find you. I pray right now, Father God, that as they denounce and repent of the sins before them and the sins that happen that others in their bloodline may have committed, they're repenting now, Father God, and then we'll denounce it and we'll make sure, Father God, that this thing is stamped out of our lineage. Oh, I feel it. I feel the power of God in here. We won't be people anymore tossed about to and fro with the can't help it and the can't stop it. But in the name of Jesus, curses are broken right now. Generational curse, we break you right now in the name of Jesus. Freemasonry, your curse is broken right now. Luciferianism, you have no power. Satan, your kingdom comes down in our lives right now. You will not establish a corrupt thing in us. But we see you now. In the name of Jesus.